Well, Omar Hilale is Morocco's ambassador to the UN. You're joining us live from UN headquarters in New York. Sir, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Explain to us why Morocco felt it was necessary to pass a resolution, put this text to the members of the UN General Assembly. Uh, good afternoon, Doha. Uh, Morocco felt it uh, necessary, if not uh, imperative, to do something. Because what's happening this last week uh, that uh, people or some persons are uh, burning the, the Quran and burning uh, uh, holy books just to, I don't know what they are or they want to express. For us, it was very important that we have a reaction by the United Nations. We agree that uh, the c many countries have condemned that. There was also reaction by the Arab and the Muslim world. But it was not uh, enough to stop this kind of defamation of a religion of two billion people all around the world. Uh, of course, during the discussions, there was a lot of uh, arguments that have been presented, uh, not on the fact to condemn the, the, this act, but uh, the reference to the international law. And we say to our European colleagues that it's high time that uh, the UN condemn such act like that we will prevent well, uh, the, the hate speech. We will prevent also a kind of, because this act is a hate act. It's an act that is provoking. It's an act that is just giving uh, opportunity to extremists. Well, so this is exactly, this is exactly to, what to, I wanted to, to ask be more, you about. Uh, active. You, you, you said this is what we yes. say. You, you just addressed um, European nations. But free speech and democracy in Western democracies um, allows for people to do this. So what do you say to Sweden, to France, to Germany, and to those countries who may entirely agree with you that burning any kind of holy book, whether it's the Quran or another one, is offensive, unhelpful, but not illegal? What do you say to them? I think with this resolution, it becomes illegal, because this resolution is not only condemning such act, but also saying that it violates international law. And I have a question to all these people who are talking about freedom of expression. What this act is helping the freedom of expression, if not fueling uh, hate, fueling extremism, and antagonizing two billion people? people, uh, Muslims, uh, we are for the freedom of expression, but the freedom of expression in Europe should also respect the freedom of faith, the freedom of having uh, its dignity as a faith, uh, and the freedom of also being safe and not be attacked by people that's the only uh, reason those who are doing this, they are not doing it. It's because they believe that is uh, freedom. They are acting as freedom of expression. They are doing it because they are extremists. They are doing it to provoke Muslims. They are doing it because they hate Islam. They are doing it because they want to create more problems to between the, 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 the different communities. Morocco have been all the time calling for dialogue, for tolerance, for coexistence, for living together, and also for compromising on all issues. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we don't, we disagree with our European colleagues and friends uh, on the, the, the expression of uh, uh, freedom of expression, because there is already in the pact on uh, civil, economic, and political rights, Article but 19 sir. and 20. They have been, uh, this uh, three, uh, an international convention have been adopted s several decades ago. And it's talking about the freedom and the limitation of this kind of freedom of expression. But, sir, if tomorrow a protester wants to organize and gets the right to organize a protest in, in Sweden, but it could be another country, I'll just take Sweden because that's where we've seen it recently, and decides to um, burn yes. a Quran, it is still not illegal under Swedish law. What would you expect to happen now that you have passed this resolution? I think, depending on the uh, legal system, in the world and in each country, there are countries who 
uh, are saying that there is prevalence. International law is above the national law. So if it's the case in this European countries, normally they should adapt their national uh, laws and regulations to the international laws just to preserve the, the peace, the harmony, and the coexistence of its citizens and also or, or the people who are living on in their countries. There is a necessity to, of a conformity of the national law with the international law. This day, uh, the resolution of yesterday is a historical one. It's a in the fight against all kind of hatred, all kind on, at, uh, of attacks against holy books, uh, churches, synagogues, uh, uh, mosques, hospitals. Uh, it's, it's a resolution that is just protecting people from all kind of ex uh, provocation and all, all right. kind of hate, because hate just provoke another hate and extremism. Omar Hilale, Morocco's ambassador to the United Nations, thank you for coming on the program.